Hi guys, Jessie here and welcome back to my Young Justice reaction series. Today we are moving on to season one, episode nine. So last episode we had a Aqualad centric episode. So we got to see like the underwater Atlantean kingdom, meet with some of his friends from his past and the girl he was in love with who ended up getting with his best friend while he was gone because yikes. Also, Black Manta showed up in the episode. Not Black Mantis like I was calling him for the entire time, which is a testament to why you should not film reaction videos at two o'clock in the morning. And we had Black Manta steal a piece of a giant cosmic starfish because he is also working for Cadmus because apparently everyone's working for Cadmus. But all together is a solid fun episode. I think I enjoyed it a lot because it was actually focused on Aqualad. So far I feel like Aqualad is my favorite character besides Robin, obviously. I don't know, I think he's just like a breath of fresh air compared to the rest of the cast. And I think that's because I am a adult watching a kid's show and he seems to be the only mature one. It also might be the fact that he's voiced by Carrie Payton. I mostly know Carrie Payton as Cyborg from Teen Titans. That show was my jam as a kid. Though I guess more recently, I know him as guest starring as Shikasta on Critical Role. That and obviously King Ezekiel from Walking Dead, where he also has just the best voice on that show. Enjoyable episode. So let's go ahead and jump into season one, episode nine. Um. Hmm. Okay. Washita. Hello, Megan. I'm on Earth. But how did I get to Earth? Why am I wearing this costume? And why does my head hurt so much? Oh. Is this a dream? Oh, no. We getting an amnesia episode? I've seen that symbol. Are you Superman? Oh. <laughs> He's gone feral. Mm, that's not a good sign. Not a dream. A nightmare. Where is everyone else? Who put me in this? Wow, I am not touching that with a ten. <laughs> no, you really shouldn't. Do you know how to use that bow? Yeah, my dad taught me. Dad, he must have done this. Another of his stupid tests. What kind of test? He probably wants me to kill you. What the fuck is Artemis past? Nice shot. Sorry, they've got bigger arrows. <laughs> this is gonna be a nice bonding moment between them two. Actually on Earth, I wanted this for so long. Even if it's not exactly like TV. But why can't I remember how I got here? Concentrate. Superboy who might Thank be a superboy friend? <laughs> There's something very funny about him just 
tanking a tank. This is the most aggressive game of tug of war if I've ever seen. Oh, there we go. There's Aqua Lad. I was wondering where our last little teammate was. He's not gonna do so well in a desert, is he? Her Majesty? <laughs> the Majesty wants him alive. Thanks. Nope, nope, never mind. Fuck this little kid. <laughs> How does it get? Last six months only, and only what you need. Careful and maintain telepathic contact. I will, Aqualad. <gasps> Aqualad, where is he? What happened next? I don't know. That's the last thing I we remember. We landed 24 hours ago. If Calder's been wandering the desert that long, well, that's not good for a guy with gills. Now that I know to look for him, he's close, but he's not moving. Raise to shock level four. Mm, that's not good. His brain's already pretty fried. Can they make him more feral? Well, someone's certainly a glutton for punishment. Simon says, forget. That's fucking freaky. Can't risk a firefight with Aqualad KO like this. It's not just him. I'm way out of juice. And I'm almost out of arrows. Oh, I forgot how much I hate it when he does the ninja thing. <laughs> hey, you never said why your dad would want you to cut me. I got confused by uh, some old movie I saw the other night about a ninja girl whose ninja dad ordered her to kill her ninja boyfriend because he was from a rival ninja clan. So, I'm your ninja boyfriend, huh? Congeniality. 
Mr. Simon, are you all right? Oh, you've made him angry. Uh, cock blocked by a giant ball. Can I keep it? <laughs> oh, what is it? Mortal will come, take the poop of the sphere, and perhaps even the Super Bowl to shame. Uh, where are they getting that stuff from, though? Uh, okay. So that was season one, episode nine, Bereft. I feel like most animated superhero shows have at least one amnesia-based episode. I wish they would have delved into them not remembering each other a little bit more. But we did get, like, a little look into some of their different relationships. The fact that Artemis and Wally seem to actually like each other when, you know, Wally's not acting like a complete ass. Yeah, I did find Wally actually slightly more enjoyable in the first half of this episode. Because he didn't really lean into his weird womanizer kind of personality traits until later. Because obviously she has a less than savory past. Something including her dad, because her mom seems very run-of-the-mill citizen. But apparently her dad taught her how to use a bow and sent her on training missions where she would have to kill people. So that makes me think that her dad is some sort of villain and that he's some sort of probably assassin or mercenary and then he's dragged his daughter into his line of work. Someone like Deathstroke and that kind of supervillain. And this has been the first episode that I've actually kind of liked them starting to hint at certain relationships. Like with Wally and Artemis, they had some cute moments. And most of that comes w from Wally being softer with Artemis this episode. Because every interaction since her introduction has been very hostile. So it's nice to show that they can actually, you know, be civil and kind to each other. Mostly if they're hinting at the fact that they're going to get together. And also the Megan-Superboy relationship, which kind of seems to have escalated very quickly. Because I have not gotten a hint that Superboy has been interested in Megan at all. Since the beginning of the show, it seemed very one-sided. And he's been friendly with her, but it's never seemed romantic. And then all of a sudden at the end of this episode, they almost kissed before being interrupted by a sentient sphere. But yeah, it seems to have just generally escalated very quickly over the course of nine episodes. But they also had a lot of cute moments, just the tiny things. And again, I think it has to do with Superboy being just gentle with her once he got out of his weird feral state. And now the team has apparently adopted a sentient mechanical ball. Sure. I'm gonna stop trying to figure out what all this means. I don't know what a sentient ball has anything to do with what Cadmus is trying to do, but whatever it is, the sentient ball isn't necessary for their plans. They still wanted the sentient ball, but it's not a huge deal that the Young Justice ended up getting it. And apparently they're getting weaponry or machinery 
from an interdimensional portal now, nothing good can come of that. If they're shipping things across the universe, that does not bode well. Because all the huge threats in the DC universe are always like weird intergalactic monsters. But we'll see how long that takes for it to show up and ruin the Young Justice's day. It's fun because... This show is interesting because each episode seems to have at least a little bit of an overarching plot element. But un unlike other shows, it's just small bookends that it doesn't actually forward the plot at all. It just leaves me confused, generally, because they keep adding different elements, but they connect absolutely nothing. And it's like getting individual puzzle pieces, but you don't have the box. Yeah, I don't know if I'm missing something or if my brain's just dumb and buffering completely, so I should have put two and two together so far, but I just haven't yet. Yeah, that's the fun thing about trying to put together the mystery of a kid show is that I never know if I'm being clever or just overthinking things. Wonder what that sphere is and what if its purpose. It seems to be alive, but I don't know if that's the fact that it's actually like a creature or if it's like an AI that is just hyper intelligent. Clearly though, it didn't want to be there. So it wasn't like it was created by Cadmus. It was clearly like stolen or if it's alive, I guess kidnapped. So yeah, that was my reaction to Season 1, Episode 9 of Young Justice. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.